Welcome to Heek Sunt Draconis. Here be dragons. So I agree, we need to colonize a different planet. Because one oops can mean the extinction of the entire human species. And think about this. If we are the only intelligent life in the universe, the universe only exists because we observe it. If we go extinct, so does the universe. That's scary. But I say we colonize Venus rather than Mars. Yep, you might think I've gone off the rails, but hear me out. It is a lot safer and easier to colonize Venus than Mars. Mars has 37% the gravity of Earth, whereas Venus might as well be the Earth, as it has 91% of the gravity. Humans don't do well in varying gravity, and anyone born and raised on Mars would most likely never be able to visit the Earth. It has a very thin atmosphere, about 1 16th that of Earth, or in other terms, equal to being at an altitude of 135 kilometers. When it comes to being a human, some pressure does us no good. Now, Venus has crazy pressures on the ground. They're enough to crush you in an instant. However, at about 50 kilometers up, the pressure can be the same as what we experience here on Earth at sea level. And the temperature at this altitude is around 20 to 37 degrees centigrade, or 68 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. That's quite comfy if I do say so myself. This, along with the intense pressures of the ground, means that airships or cloud cities are quite possible. Instead of trying to float an airship on Earth, floating an airship on Venus would be a lot easier. And a lot more similar to, say, floating an airship on the ocean. Balloons don't sink to the bottom of the ocean. Now on Mars, spacesuits are required because spacesuits are simply pressure suits. And the human body just does not function at very low pressures. Therefore, the suits keep us pressurized. But on Venus at the right altitude, a pressure suit would not be needed at all. Neither would a helmet. A simple oxygen mask would suffice just fine. A leak could be disastrous. It would take a long time to leak out, but it will. And it could catastrophically fail at any point and go boom due to the pressure differences. On Venus, this wouldn't happen since the pressures at the higher altitudes are equal. And the chances of random booms would be the same as here on Earth. You're just keeping one gas away from another. Poke a hole and some might mix together, but your house isn't going to deflate. In fact, it would really be exactly like living here on Earth if the outside air was more poisonous. Now, travel time. The longer we are in space traveling between planets, the more at risk we are. Everything from gravity issues to radiation to just random disasters. So, we need to limit that. Since Mars orbits the Sun at a different rate, the two planets are only close enough to make trips at set times. Launch windows to Venus occur every 584 days, compared to the 780 days for Mars. This means emergency supplies are 200 some days further away on Mars. And once you can go, it takes about 3 months to get to Venus, versus 9 months to get to Mars. I know which one I prefer. It would be terraformed but it doesn't have the material that it needs, so we have to go out and fetch it. It's thought that Mars once had a lot more active of a molten core and a magnetic field, which it lost billions of years ago. Now, Mars is unprotected from the solar wind. This means that gas in Mars's thin atmosphere is constantly leaking out into space, and this will include any new atmosphere that we go gather up when we're trying to terraform the planet. It's going to be a constant task of just refilling Mars. Beyond atmosphere, humans require water. Mars is a pretty small planet, and due to this, it never really stood a chance, nor does it stand a chance of keeping its water. New research shows that Mars's small size and weak gravity made it very easy for the water in the atmosphere to escape and just run off into space. But Venus does have a magnetic field. 
unlike the Earth, which has an intrinsic magnetic field from the rotating molten material inside its core, Venus generates its magnetic field from the interaction of the Sun's solar wind with the planet's ionosphere, the atmospheric region filled with charged atoms. Those charged atoms create electric currents. As the solar wind drapes over Venus, it interacts with these currents to produce a full-fledged magnetosphere around the planet. The pileup of magnetic field between the magnetosphere and Venus's ionosphere, the magnetic barrier, prevents the solar wind plasma from penetrating deeper down into Venus's atmosphere. With that said, Venus has too much material, which is easier to remove than having to hunt through the universe to find material to add. Venus is also substantially easier to terraform. One simply has to remove the huge amounts of CO2, and this can be done in many ways. Once done, the greenhouse effect will stop and the planet will drop in temperature, causing many gases to cool down and turn into liquids or even solids, which allows them to be easily removed and contained. But this isn't a video about terraforming Venus. For that, I direct you to Kurskasagd. See the description for the link. So, I hope that I've given you a better overview of why colonizing Mars is such a wacky idea compared to how much easier and safer it is to colonize Venus. And let's not forget just how cool cloud cities are. Anyways, have a good day.